So she's gonna turn on this vacuum here. Make sure nothing ever hurts you. Cut that off. The moment is upon us. I'm finally here to see Dr. Lee, and I hope she can help me with my condition, at least telling me exactly you know what it is. It's, it's just embarrassing. It irritates me, and uh, I still struggle with the, the anxiety of being around other people with this on my face. Thanks for going through this whole thing with me. I'm excited to see what she can do. I want to set an example for my son that I can still get back full force to the old daddy. I am nervous. My biggest fear is that she can't help me with my condition that I have and that I won't move forward in life. So. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are nice you? Nice to meet you both. I'm nice Dr. Lee, you. welcome. You must be the patient, Eddie. Yes. And you are? Adrian, I'm his son. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You are here, I, I would I guess, because of this birthmark, really, right? Is that what yeah, you call it, too? That's what it started out as when I was yeah. born. You were born with it? OK. Yeah. But yeah. it just keeps getting bigger. And then over time, this all came up. It got bumpy? Yeah, okay. real bad. It's embarrassing. It right, amazing. right. And it stops right in the midline, it looks like. this. not, yeah. not on the other side as well, right? No. Uh -uh. OK. I think what you have here is what's called a port wine stain. Mm -hmm. The other term for that is nevus flamius. But what's very typical of this and what clues me into this diagnosis is the fact that you had it since birth and that it's bumpy or even warty. And the other clue is that it is on one side. But I think I should take a look at it first, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A port wine stain is a capillary malformation. Essentially, it's like a vascular birthmark and is called a port wine stain because it's that color of port wine. So this is definitely a port wine stain. A lot of the times with these port wine is you get this purple color, yeah. which kind of tells me too that the pigment or the growth may be a little deeper under there. And we got a few, like three little bumps here. Hopefully, we can get rid of them and not have too much problems with bleeding. Having something this prominent, this noticeable in the center of your face can affect your ability to just function as a normal human being. So I feel for Eddie. Port wine stains are very difficult to treat. They are particularly stubborn. So hopefully, we're going to have an answer for him. You know, there are things that we, you can try to remove a port wine stain like uh, laser treatments used to help lighten these vascular abnormalities, but they can take multiple treatments and each treatment has a gradual improvement. Yes. And also, even if you get like 12 treatments, it's not guaranteed that the whole thing is completely gone. Right. You know, that kind of thing. In terms of the bumpies, we can try to flatten that with other kind of techniques here. Hopefully they don't grow back. So one of the things is that this laser, it feels like the snap of a rubber band. So it's not like the most comfortable thing. So we'll see how you respond, OK? okay we'll you. get all set thank up you for you. Thank you very much. Well, it feels great to have Dr. Lee actually get me a good answer to what it is. We're all ready right. for you. All right. We're bringing you inside. All right. And wish me good luck, man. I can't wait to look in the mirror and it's not there. You know, If she can help improve this, I'll just be grateful to her. Every time I wake up in the morning, I, I'm, I'm very much a mixed emotion of anger and sadness because of this, this thing in my nose. Go ahead and have a seat, and Dr. Lee will be right in, OK? Thank you. You're welcome. Having this burden in my life, I'm falling apart inside. OK, girls, I'm ready for my next patient. Who do you got? We have a gentleman from the Philippines, and he has some bumps on his nose. He came all the way from the yeah. Philippines? Really? Yep, just to see you. That's a long way to go for bumps on the nose. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty prominent. prominent. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go take a look. He's in room, what room is Room six. There? OK, thank you. All You're right. welcome. Hi, is it Genner? Hi. Is yeah. that how you say yes. your name? Hi, I'm Sandra, Dr. Nice Lee. Nice to meet you, though. Nice to meet you. Welcome. You came from pretty far out here. Yeah, from Philippines. I feel honored that you came so far to see me. Yeah. And I think I know what we're coming here for, huh? Yes. It's, uh, this growth on your nose. Yes. How long have you had this for? I believe it started last 2004. 14 years ago or, or so. First, I thought it was just an ordinary pimple. And it just kept coming, huh? Yeah. Do you feel like it's still growing, or it's kind of stayed about the yes, same? Yes, it keeps on, keeps on growing. OK. You know what this is called? No. Rhinophyma. Rhinophyma? Yeah. 
Rhinophyma is like a thickening of the skin, in particular on the nose. It's actually an extreme form of rosacea. Ah. Um, oftentimes what you'll get with rosacea is you'll get the redness, yes. you'll flush. Mm. You do you do that? You yeah. do flush and it sometimes... all the time. And then there's also pimples that kind of associate with rosacea, like little breakouts. Those are the two other stages of rosacea. The third stage, the more severe form of rosacea, is what you have, rhinophyma. Genner has really an interesting presentation of rhinophyma. He's just sort of had a thickening on the tip of his nose and it's sort of just piled up there. It just looks like he chewed a whole pack of bubble gum and just slapped it on his nose. And now we just want to put take that off. So I've done quite a few of these where we remove the rhinophyma and that entails using like a hot wire loop to, uh. to like re-sculpt your nose. Risks are scarring, infection, um, you know, maybe scarring can distort a little of your, your nostril. Ganner is part Asian and being of Asian descent, we tend to have a little darker skin color. When you have darker skin, you have a potential to scar with a permanent lighter skin color. So I really want to take off just as much as we need, and I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that this does not scar with a really white kind of color, because that could be just as noticeable as having this mound of flesh on your nose. Well, hello. How are you? How are you? How are you Glad to nice see you again. Nice to see you. You dress up pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. The last time I saw you, you were taking me somewhere in a car. That was such a cool, like, serendipitous moment that we met each other. True. I didn't see you in the real light. You're a good-looking guy under there here. We just got to take that <laughs> nose off, huh? That extra nose. <sighs> this is a condition called rhinophyma. It is a condition that's associated with rosacea, but yeah. it causes an overgrowth of tissue, particularly on the nose. So let me take a look at it again here up close. This nostril is completely occluded, huh? You can't mm -hmm. breathe out of that nose. Well, it's getting there. How long has this been growing here? About a year. As I'm examining David's nose, I can see that the left side of his nose, the rhinophyma, is more prominent, and it really is obstructing his nasal canal, making it hard for him to breathe. Now, I can't help but notice there's another little bump here, too. How long have you had that bump? Uh, about six months or so. Six months here for this yeah. area? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I can't help but notice this growth under David's right eye. I am concerned about that growth. That is something that we do need to address, but I really need to focus my attention and focus his attention on his rhinophyma, and let's treat that first. Okay, I think I heard you a little hard of hearing. Yes. During the procedure, if you feel like you ever can't hear me, okay. you know, you make sure you let me know, okay? I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Valerie, you saw him, huh, when you brought him back? Mm -hmm. Did you see that bump on his, yeah, on his, on his cheek? cheek? Yeah, it's very concerning to me. But you know, you obviously are, are drawn to his nose and his issue there. So yeah. let's take care of that first today. I don't want to worry him. We'll get the loop cautery all set up and let's get started with him. My plan is to definitely bring up the growth before he leaves, but I don't want David to be concerned. I want him to really understand what we're doing and, and be calm for a rhinophyma surgery, which is a big surgery. Gonna numb this whole area of your nose, it's gonna feel like it's running. I've numbed up David's nose, and I'm gonna try to remove as much of this rhinophyma that I can and really unearth that handsome debonair limo driver that I know is in there. I really hope this goes smoothly. Oh! He's in shock a little bit. Oh. I'm here with Dwayne, who has bumps around his nose. This is called multiple trichoepitheliomas. Dwayne is sensitive to needles, but you know, I really have to numb up this last bit here, and he's gotta let me do that, otherwise I can't proceed. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. You feel like a pincushion? <laughs> Dwayne was able to push through and let me anesthetize him completely. Now the hard part comes, though. I need to use my loop cautery tool to really re-sculpt this nose and mouth area. So I'm going to do just a little bit of one here first, just so you know what it's about. You good? Mm-hmm. I want to make this area look as natural as possible and bring his cute nose back. This is a delicate surgery. I'm trying to go deep enough. 
removing all of the trichoepithelioma, but not so deep that I leave him with dips in his skin. You're comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Other than the smell. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to suction it as much as I can. Okay. All right, done on that side. Good deal. It's halfway done and it's looking good. Now I need to tackle the other side and make sure that it matches the first side. I need to be really precise. If I do too little, he'll be left with some bumpiness there. If I do too much, it could draw just the same amount of attention as it does now because he'll have a big, noticeable, indented scar. It's like Goldilocks. You don't want it too much or too little. You want it to be just right. I got that big piece off. I'm just turning it down now. So close. Now we're just doing the cleaning up part. OK. So I'm going to have you take a look. Right now, it looks a little bit bumpy. It'll smooth down. Even tomorrow, you're going to see a difference. What do you think? Looks right? good. I feel amazing. The last time that I had seen my nose smooth was when I was 20 years old. I am confident in myself again, and I'm ready to get back out in the world. Dr. Lee got the job done. See your little friends there? Or you don't want to feed that to the fish? I bet you you catch some fish. With no. <laughs> If Dr. Lee can help me, I believe it'll help me be able to sleep through the night better as far as my breathing. You know, there's lots of things that it'll make a difference in. Hello. Hello, how Hi. you doing? Very nice to meet you, sir. Thanks for coming all the way out here. Where'd you come from? Louisiana. Louisiana. Well, welcome. First of all, you look like one of the members of ZZ Top. <laughs> So I guess you're seeing us for your nose. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what this is? Uh, you know what it's called? Uh, rhinophyma, it yeah. looks like, from, from, from this distance. Rhinophyma is like a severe form of rosacea. You might have heard of rosacea before. Some people, especially men, they can get a, um, a thickening of their skin on the nose in particular. Does it cause you pain, or does it cause any discomfort for you? Uh, I have a hard time breathing. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a look, OK? Yeah, whatever okay. you do. Terry is such a sweet, soft-spoken gentleman, really with this gruff exterior. And maybe he has this exterior, too, to kind of distract from this extensive rhinophyma that he has. This type of extensive rhinophyma is certainly a treatment that is not without risks. It's, it involves a, quite a lot of your nose here but it's really the front of your nose that you have the brunt of it. I just concern mainly because this is a pretty large area with a good blood supply to it, so that's what I think about. Obviously, this is a big case of rhinophyma, and I don't want to promise the world that I can take all of this out in one get-go because there's risks. I know I have to take this off slowly and gradually. I mean, I, I never know what's under each layer here. I mean, who knows what you're going to come across underneath there. I'm going to give it a try. I can't promise everything, but let's see what we can do there. OK? All right, I'm going to go set up over there, and I'll call you back. OK, thank you. I know that Dr. Lee's concerned about how advanced my condition is. One of my biggest fears is if the bleeding gets out of control and we have to stop it, what, what will happen then? My target is this large knob right here, essentially. But the bleeding. It's concerning to me. You know, sometimes you get like some good veins that come out and populate this area. It might be too much for you to handle. So, but let's see, okay? Might be able to do it all today, or we might have, yeah, have you come back again. Just do whatever you need to do. There's only so much numbing that you can give any patient at any given day. Certainly at high levels, that can really affect your heart. That can actually cause toxicity to your heart. I'm Let me numb up one side first, and let's see how well we can do this, how quickly and how efficiently with as little bleeding as possible and with the most comfort as possible. Sometimes it comes out of the little pores. Oh, sorry. That's just the numbing medicine coming out of the pores. That's why I wear all my gear, too. 
Today, I'm using the surgical electrocautery loop. It cuts through tissue, but at the same time, it's going to help to seal little blood vessels there so you have less bleeding. So she's gonna turn on this vacuum here. Make sure nothing ever hurts you. Cut that off. Rhinophyma is really a thickening of oily skin. You get these enlarged pores that oil can store in, right? Oil and keratin, or dead skin cells. Interestingly, a lot of the size of his nose doesn't have so much to do with actual skin there. It's, there are big pockets of butter in there. There's big pockets of oil in there. These are some of the biggest butter pockets I've ever seen. Well, hello, you must be Roger. Hi. And? Tori, I'm his niece. Niece, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I'm gonna take my mask off. You don't mind, yes, I'm taking it off. My goodness. Okay, so when did you get this? About 12 years ago. Okay, oh, there's a fly. Get the fly out of the They're way. They're gonna be getting on here because if it's leaking a little bit, they, they... Oh, they are attracted to it? You yep. think so? It looks like it bleeds a little bit underneath here too. Right here. Right, right. Like it's not getting enough good blood supply all the way down there, you know? And you can see, oh, you can see it leaking a little. Wait, it's yeah, leaking it's on the, you a little bit. The, Do you want a little nap, get a Kleenex the, for him or something? It's the pus. Ah, okay. It's the pus. So if you move around too much and it, it kind of jostles it, it happens almost yeah. every day at least. Like when I sleep, my pillow will be full of it. That's no fun. I mean, this is the most extensive case I've seen of rhinophyma. Of course, when I initially saw Roger's nose, I thought, holy cow. I couldn't even imagine that somebody has this level of rhinophyma. It is quite shocking, but I'm trying to stay optimistic. Maybe this is something that can actually be easily removed. The only way I'm going to figure this out is by looking at it from every direction possible. Does it cause you pain? Does it pull down on your nose? This gives it a pain in here. OK. And it runs to my eye. Oh, yeah, because it's pulling on you. It's like this heavy weight. I'm sure that, that weighs something. You know, what is going to help me decide if this is something that I can do is really how it's attaching to your nose, specifically. Rhinophyma is caused by rosacea. It's really a thickening of oily skin. You get these enlarged pores and what we call patchless follicles, just really widened and really dilated and sort of floppy oil glands, and those are becoming like holes that oil can store in, right? Oil and keratin, or dead skin cells. And Roger has the most extreme level of rhinophyma that I've ever seen. His situation is truly critical. But I'm really trying not to let it intimidate me because I know he feels that I'm his last hope. And maybe I am. Maybe I'm the only one that will really try to take my time and find an answer for him. OK, so this is the dorsum of your nose, or the top of your nose. We got a pretty enlarged little blood vessel right there, huh? Excuse me here. I just want to feel where your nostrils are. Because the main concern I have here is how it's occluding your nostrils and whether your nostrils, the cartilage, is still patent and things like that. Oh, your nostrils right here. See, his nostril is like stretched to here. This actually keeps getting more complicated the more I take a look at this. His nostrils are stretched. A normal size of a nostril is probably a head of a pencil eraser. In Roger's case, his nostrils are the size of the opening of a shot glass. The nostril has cartilage in it, and you need that support. Otherwise, every time you inhale, it'll just go, you know? You need that support there. But also, these huge growths have established a very good blood supply. Those blood vessels have gotten bigger to supply this wider area. Those are going to be much more difficult to control in terms of bleeding. There are some things that concern me a little bit. I've never seen it to the extent that it distorts someone's nostrils, you know, because of the weight of it. So I want to make sure that I can do this properly. This is not like a single treatment sort of thing. This is a multi-level thing that we're going to do, and um, I got to think about you for a while. I certainly am going to consult with my colleagues, like experts in ear, nose, and throat, expert dermatologic surgeons, and see whether we can figure this out together, OK? I hope I can help you. I do. Hope you can, too. Yeah.
This is a really complicated case, and I would like to ask some of my colleagues who are true experts at nasal surgery, and we can figure out how to best take care of him. Because number one, I want him to be safe. Number two, I want to really help him get this done. And number three, I don't want anything bad to happen to him. We'll be in touch, okay? This is not goodbye for everyone. We'll be in touch in a couple take? weeks. I don't know. Uh, a couple of weeks, so we're gonna figure things out. It's gonna be getting bigger and bigger. Well, I don't think it's gonna be a year. I don't think it's gonna be months and months either. But we'll figure. We're gonna figure this out. We got you in the system here, okay? It really worries me that Doctor Lee can't help me because I can't live like this no more because. I can't do nothing, and I can't be around my family. They all miss me, but I don't like to be around because of the way I look. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> I'll see you later, okay? This is too much pain already. I'm already getting frustrated with it, and I don't want to do nothing dumb. Like, there's been times when I wanted to pull it off, but I know I would probably bleed bad, and there ain't going to be no way to stop it. So I hope something happens.